everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to part three of my Higurashi When They Cry Hamatsubushi Let's Play. In the last episode, Akasaka came across teeny tiny little Rika, and she's so cute, and he loves her, and she seems to have taken a liking to him. So now he has kind of an in to the shrine area so he can investigate more with this uh, Onigafuchi Defense Alliance. But then there was a moment where Rika wasn't quite so cute, and she seemed to have been taken over by some older version of herself or some sort of entity who warned him if he didn't go back to Tokyo, something horrible would happen to him. And it's Higurashi, so who knows what might happen. But anyway, it's starting to pick up now, and I'm very excited to get back into this and find out what will happen next and what is going to happen with Rika and Akasaka. So let's get into it. The phone suddenly rang. I woke up in a hurry. The clock read 9pm. I picked up the receiver. I knew it. I didn't call in, so they had phoned me. After I put down the receiver for a few seconds, the phone began to ring again. Leaving the lecture for later, my senior co-worker got straight to the point. Today, ひかくするほど経験がないので、上手美かはわかりませんが、とりあえず、今日のところは順調だと思います。県警での情報や地元警察の公安での情報と照らしてどう、鬼ヶ淵死守同盟は白っぽい。I still didn't know. I should have been able to say that immediately. I only had to say that, but for some reason, I hesitated. まだ調査中ですので、なんとも。so he could have had the easy way out and been like, nope, they seem to be fine. Now I can go home to my wife and my future child, but he knows something's fishy here. So, なるべく早めにね。分かってると思うけど、今夜が終われば誘拐から丸4日が経過する。いつか時間切れという明白な区切りはないけど、時間の経過は確実に我々の状況を不利にしていく。それは分かってるよね。分かっています。迅速に。だけれど、最新の注意で調査を続けます。うん。くれぐれも気をつけてね。相手は暴力主義団体なんだから。油断すれば危険もありえるからね。危険が迫ったらすぐに連絡を。その場合は地元公安に応
なるべく早めに蹴りをつけるようにしますうんよろしくねじゃあ他に何もなければ蹴るよはい特にありません As we were ending,、uh, we were ending our call, he scolded me thoroughly for being late with my regular report. After that, I hung up the phone and sprawled out onto the bed. Come to think of it, I hadn't heard anything from Oishi. Oh, true, he was supposed to contact me about a time and place to meet up with the informant tonight. I thought about getting angry with Oishi in retaliation for being scolded for forgetting my daily report. Come to think of it, though, Oishi didn't really say anything other than he was going to call tonight. Waiting for a phone call when you didn't know what time it was going to come was in itself rather difficult. Just when I thought that, the phone rang. I picked up the receiver in a hurry. もしもしこれはびっくりしました。アカサカさん、あなた受話器取るの早いですね。There's that music. I like this funky music. 警官辞めても大企業の営業で十分飯が食えますよ。まだ警官辞めた後のことなんか考えたこともありません。そこまで過剰に反応されると面白いな。<笑>しかしいけないな。因果な商売ですし、今から考えても遅くないですよ。<笑>遠慮いたしますので、本題に入ってください、大石さん。そうですか。それは残念です。じゃあ老後の話は次の機会にでも。では本題に。Many of the executives in the Onagafushi Defense Alliance had a lot of sway in the neighboring regions. Even in Okinomiya, there were a lot of people with relations in the village. That's why meeting in the Shishibone Market District, far from Okinomiya, was a matter of course. Agazaka san, go to 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 go 遅れて申し訳ありませんでした。夕飯はもう食べちゃいました。ええ、済ませてあります。じゃあ、お酒の飲めるお店に行きましょうか。洋酒派日本酒派女の子のいる店といない店はどっちがいいですかね。<笑>お構いなく、勤務中は飲みませんので。Hearing that, the man that Oishi had brought along bent backwards as he go off. Hearing that, the man that Oishi had brought along bent backwards as he guffawed, clapping Oishi on the shoulder. Me? Are we gonna see this mysterious man? Oishi, he's the show? Son of a bitch, I'll be the service to get the other side. I know, I'm gonna have them, but I'm gonna have them, I'm gonna have them, I'm gonna have them. The man that Oishi had brought seemed almost like a ticket scalper or a bookie, even his appearance was dubious. The informant grinned deviously. Oi, Bozo. Sato. I, I don't know if we've ever met a Sato or even heard of a Sato before. Oi, Danna ni ikura wa dashita. Daiba tochu de tsumami gui sarten zo. Oishi shi no chukai te suryo mo fukume te imasu kara. Sore mo fukunda ue desu. It seemed that the informant had expected a more extravagant reaction on my part. When I responded matter of factly, he realized that I was an entirely different type of person than he was. But rather than putting a distance between us, it seemed that I had piqued his interest. どう武器になるか疑問です<笑> The informant unable to contain himself clutches his, clutched at his stomach as he guffawed heedless of the people watching いやもう赤坂さんはいちいちさしがいいなよっさすが高学歴大石さんあなたどこかで飲んできましたね酔っ払ってますオフタイムに飲んで何が悪いんですかあなたは勤務中でも私はオフオフ
Oishi, who was the sort that fool around to begin with, was in such a good mood I couldn't figure out a way to deal with him. Completely different than me, who had come worried about getting every bit of info uh, information I could. Oishi-san, after taking so much money, you were supposed to get me information worth at least as much. I thought this, but then realized I was getting my information from the informant, so it didn't matter how drunk Oishi was. It was nothing I could complain about, but I still felt slightly riled up. Oishi and the informant, who was no doubt a fake name, but he introduced himself as Sato, led the way deeper and deeper into the back streets of the market district. Even though the market was bustling, a couple of turns off the main street and you were in a desolate alleyway. Oishi started climbing a set of stairs on the side of a seedy building. There wasn't any sort of signage, so I couldn't tell if the place was open, or if it was even a store at all. <laughs> Those words coming from Oishi's mouth had absolutely no credibility. Ah, the, uh, oh, what's it called? Mahjong parlor? Beyond the door was, thankfully, a typical Mahjong parlor. I was relieved it wasn't the sort of suspicious place I had to be on my guard about. Mahjong is a game played with four people. It seems that a middle-aged man who was going to be our fourth had already arrived and was waiting for us. Oishi oh, made an excuse for why he had taken so long. Eventually, realizing I was a new face, the other man grew interested. I was gonna say, I, I would... I guess I'd feel more comfortable if he was using, like, a fake name for me, or at least not telling people that, uh, you know, I'm a cop, but I'm sure they're all off-duty police officers, but still. Sato and the old man cackled in unison. Their plot to sucker me out of my money was painfully obvious. But of course there's going to be something more behind Oishi's motives. There always is. うん。うん。うん。今更野暮なことを聞きますが、私たち警察官ですよね。まあ、それはいい子なしで。何実際には書けるわけじゃありませんよ。この後いいお店に遊びに行くときに誰が全員分を払うのか決めるだけですって。うん。遊びに行く？どんな店に遊びに行くんですか？ <笑> Without reservation, the three of them start suggesting suggesting places like cabarets, high-class clubs, and even brothels. At the very least, they were the type of places you couldn't go to with money that was just for funsies. <laughs> 私のお金は先日、大石さんに根こそぎ預けて支払いは不可能ですし、仕事の都合があるので長い。じゃあ、坊主が勝てばいいじゃねえかよ。おめえが勝ったら、このジャンソーの支払いはなしで
静かに飲めるお店でいいですよ静かにバニーさんとでしょ Uh, I prefer when it was Rika. <laughs> it was nice having an Oishi free chapter or episode. <laughs> I want to know more about the Defense Alliance and I want to I wanna see Rika more and maybe Mion. <laughs> What a lively table this was. I could tell the other customers were glaring at us while we loudly continued our crude conversation. Speaking of which, the fact they assumed I was the same was a bit disheartening. Oishi had taken all the money I'd brought, so everything I had left was out of my own pocket. In addition, there wasn't that much left of that either. If I kept on hanging around him like this, through his goading, my wallet would disappear into the night. I had to somehow win and return the conversation to my job. But these people, no matter how you looked at it, were pretty good. Sorry, Yuki. <laughs> oh! <laughs> We've got the club music! Oh, I miss the club music. This isn't quite the context I would like to hear it in, but better that than nothing. Especially because I know nothing about Mahjong, so all of this is just going right over my head. Well, the old man and Sato san probably won't fall for this silly Richie. I wonder if Akasaka kun will spit out what I need. Oh, I'm. Okay, so I'm Oishi now. Oh ho! The old man's pretty good. He's quietly trying to use one of my sa、uh, safe tiles to complete his hand, isn't he? It seems that Akasaka kun has at least learned the ropes when it comes to guarding against someone's Richie. But that will be his downfall. So it's quite interesting that we're jumping between different characters in this one. I'm trying to think if that's happened in any of the chapters before. <sighs> Ooh, Akasaka kun's really fretting over this one. It was glaringly obvious that he had a safe tile to discard, but he didn't want to throw it away because it would move him farther from completing his hand. Hmm, they're so nice when they're young and innocent. Come on, hurry up and throw out the kicker. If he gave me the winning tile, we'd be headed to an establishment where I could do with all sorts of licking and sucking. Ooh, <laughs> gag. If he gives this old man his winning tile, we'll be straight to the place with maids and bloomers. He looked up as he hesitantly threw out a tile that was. Oh, too bad. <laughs> It seems this time you were lucky. But as long as the round kept going, I could still win off the draw. I can't, I can't do his laugh. But after that, Akasaka kun managed to luckily avoid throwing any bad tiles, and somehow the round managed to end without anybody completing a hand. Sato san had keenly anticipated the two players were in Richi and had decided to play it safe. What a cool headed way of playing. Now let's see, what kind of hand did Akasaka kun have? When the round ends with nobody winning in Mahjong, anyone in Tenpai has to show their hand. This is so, this is like Greek to me, my goodness. But if you're not in Tenpai, you have no obligation to reveal it. Your average beginner would normally show their hand even if they weren't in Tenpai. It's sort of commotion about how if this tile or that tile came, they would be in Tenpai. But he didn't. Being stingy? What was it? Just to see it. Sato san reached over to flip the hand that Akasaka kun had casually placed face down. <laughs> He was nowhere near Tenpai. Was Akasaka kun totally bad at this after all? <laughs> right then, as the old man compared the tiles from Akasaka kun's hand to the discard pool, a puzzled expression crossed his face. <laughs> Uh, I guess he knows a little bit more than they thought. 
I guess maybe he was playing his own hand. We're just saying, oh, I just played a little bit. He's actually like a secretly a Mahjong expert. I mean, I know nothing about Mahjong, but it seems like he knows what he's talking about. Oh, そう遠くほど<笑> あかさかさん、あんたマージャン始めてどのくらい高校から大学くらいまでの間しかやっていませんよ。さあ、続けましょう。佐藤さんは転敗しなかったから流れて、次は私ですね。we thought we were just going to eat him alive, but it looks like that isn't going to be so easy. Oh, okay, now we get to see what he looks like. Alright. Ah, uh, he reminds me of Phoenix Wright a little bit. I don't know why. Maybe it's the suit? He's got like, it's, it's basically like if you didn't have gel to spike his hair up. Crowd. <laughs> あと3つ。いい灰が来ればな。佐藤さんはうまくいきそうです。くそ。食いたんで引きずり下ろすか。しだ。しいですか。じゃあすみません。それポンです。Whoa well, now, going to call three of a kind after he declared a straight? Trying to override and interfere? ボーズ。おめえ、離れしとるな。まさか。私が生まれる前から打ってるような方々とは比べようもないですよ。ま、それです。ロン。ああ、ガズイズなクワイトソナイヴアフターオール。ロイトイアカーカドラソン。親ですからね。ちょっぴり高いですよ。クワ。ハ
ってやがったかだからあんたぬるいよいくらダマだからってこんなにぬるい三面なんだから読んでくれなくっちゃ赤坂くん chuckled as he rested his chin in his hands That pose was so fitting it was almost scary おいクラウド話がちげえぞ初々しいカモがネギ沿ってきたって言ったのは誰だいやー<笑>誰でしょうねおいしさまずいよこのままじゃ負けるよマジで赤坂サカ君 For you to make me get serious Looks like you really want to be milk dry ポンポン気前がいいですねもう一回ポンです Akasaka kun was almost singing at this point. The tiles he had opened were all pin tiles. You can't be serious. Are you really going for the flush? Pong. Bozo. Choki ka? Yotsu mo sarashita ra! Ome pai ga hitotsu dake jane ka yo! So desu ne. Shitte masu? Danki machi te ichiban yomare ni kui rashi desu yo. Ba. Ba ga ga te mi! そこまで染めて晒しといて今さら出ると思うんじゃねえ<笑>読めてますよ若坂さんそれ均一でも本一でもないんでしょう<笑> 4つポンした時点でトイトイは成立してますからねあんた今絶好の単独トップ Okay, so Oishi's calling him out. I wonder if he's gonna pull a Keichi like,、uh, you know, finish right at the end. Just a total Hail Mary and win it all. Or if,、uh, or if he's gonna lose to Oishi. It's like, yeah, he's, he's playing those head games like Keichi does. ね、you must be joking. Is he a Mahjong god? If not, he had to be the main character of a manga or something. At that moment, the old man sent me a sign under the table. The message was simple and clear. ここまで舐められて今さら引けるかもう知りませんよではどうぞ行くぞ坊主リーチだオープンで行くぞピンズの一寸地待ちだ<笑> Most likely the tile that Akasaka-kun was waiting for was one of those tiles With this Akasaka-kun was no longer capable of winning the hand When I drew from the wall, I switched out the tile that Akasaka kun would draw. The tile that I put in was the one pin, one of the tiles that the old man was waiting on. Akasaka kun discarded it a little while ago, so there was no threat of it being the one he needed. I knew he was troubled that the tile he drew was the one pin. Of course, he couldn't discard it. わかってると思うがオープンリーチに振り込んだら百万払いだぜ言われるまでもありませんよ The tile that came from Akasaka-kun's hand was an honor tile Woo, ain't that something There's only one north wind tile left, isn't there? You were counting on a really rough weight, weren't you? But with this, Akasaka-kun's fate was decided <laughs> カザ、命拾いしたなだが、手配は一名だ。逃げ切れなくなることもあるんじゃねえのか<笑>やっぱりそういうことか。アカサカ君 glared at the old man with a discerning eye。This guy had pretty good instincts。Did he figure out we were cheating? やめましょうよ、おやっさん。アカサカ君の方が遺産枚はわてです。だるい、ここまで来てやめられるかよ。The next tile Akasaka kun would draw was the seven pin. 
With that, it would be settled. No matter which one he discarded, he'd play right into the old man's hand. An unavoidable full payout. When I drew my tile, I sneakily swapped Akasaka-sons. Oh, oh, he's cheating too. He knows what they're doing. He's, he is, he would be a very good member of the club. What? Akasaka can suddenly sneeze, collapsing the wall of tiles in front of him. Oh, so he's going to take the penalty, but he knows they're cheating, so it's going to mess it all up. <laughs> Unable to hold back, I guffawed. Akasaka-kun, knowing he was going to be cornered a second time and unable to escape, he took a drastic measure of knocking over his own wall. お、馬鹿にすぎて。あんた、当時はどのくらいの勝率でやってたの?面地にもよりましたが、歌舞伎町あたりで打つ時はほぼ負けなしでした。特に相手が荒れ系の人の時は命かかってましたからね。20 times? What kind of stakes were those? What kind of stakes were those? Did you have Yakuza at your table? Or pro baseball players? なんだなんだ。クラウドは。この宅は。ま、どっからこんなプロ雑誌みたいなの引っ張ってきたんだ。もうやめだ、やめ。え、もう。坊主。おめえの勝ちだ。高さん、高さん。ありがとうございます。光
So that was Akasaka-kun, the Mahjong prodigy. Before he goes home for his assignment, maybe I could have him go play at a high-stakes table in my place. But it's not good to get greedy. Hmm. <laughs> now we can get back to business. Now we can actually talk police work. Yes, because like I know nothing about Mahjong, so all that stuff was just like, whatever. よろしくお願いしますね、親さん。今夜はこれでお開きにしましょう。申し訳ありませんね、親さん。今夜はこれでお開きです。しゃあねえな。切ってんねるわ。体力つけんと体が持たん。お仕事が大変なんですかなあ
Hmm. Quoi si na? Checking to see if you were being tailed by making left turns was a rather classic technique. If it was just a single pursuer, you could confirm it that way. But if you were being tailed as a team, this archaic method wouldn't let you shake them. Of course, doing it anyway was better than not. Akasaka-kun ga nani mono kawa danna kara nani mo kiite nai nda ga. Yappari keisatsu kankei ka e? Bikou kakunin ni kuwa shi nante. Ato wa tantei sha kurai shika omoi tsuka nai ne. Iwa na kereba nara nai mono de nai nara. I smiled wryly. Looking back now, I had to be a little grateful for being made to play Mahjong. Thanks to that, I was able to relieve some tension. Eventually, Sato-san, confirming that there were no cars following us, slipped outside the city. We were on a pitch black country road, unable to see anything besides the lights outside. The only things I was able to hear were the hum of the car's air conditioning and the chirping of insects and frogs. では、お願いします。犬飼大臣の孫の誘拐に鬼が伏し主導名が関与しているかを言いながら。Sato-san checked the rearview mirror one more time to confirm there wasn't anybody behind us before speaking. さくや。その先本家で親族会議が開かれたそうだ。親族会議ってのは旦那から聞いてるか? いえ。普通に親族会議って言ったらまあ親戚が集まってお茶でも飲むようなもんだよなだがその先本家の親族会議ってのはそんなのんびりしたものってわけが違うあ family council held by the sonazaki main house that would be a meeting between those who truly controlled himizawa village they wouldn't be talking about private family matters it would be about the village as a whole about organizing activities against the dam project. Among other things, everything would be decided there. In reality, they were deciding the fate of the village. At the head of the meeting was Oreo Sonazaki, more or less called Emperor Sonazaki as the ultimate decision maker of the clan, she was to be feared and respected. Infirm with old age, she was often unable to stand on her own, but her words carried enough weight to sway the fate of the village. It seemed that lately she had grown weak, and on days where she wasn't feeling well, remained bedridden. Family councils that occurred while she wasn't feeling well took place with her on the floor. In the middle of a dignified Japanese-style room, still in a futon, only the upper half of her body sitting upright, a stern look on her face. That was Oreo Sonazaki. Sitting next to her was her heir, Mion Sonazaki. Okay, so I guess when the, uh... The foreman was talking about the daughter that he hated as Sonazaki. It must have been Mion. I still can't remember if the game told us anything about what happened to her mother. I'm sure you guys know, and you will let me know unless it hasn't been said yet and it will be, you know, told later. She was still young. No, young wasn't quite the right word. She was a girl who remained childish. Her role was to merely sit beside Oreo Sonazaki, sometimes responding to her, her requests. However, she was the only one deemed worthy to succeed Oreo. Well, we know that Mion is definitely capable. She had the same hawkish eyes, enough to give pause to anybody who so much as looked at them. Much was expected of her in the future, this granddaughter of the Sonazaki's leader. And also on either side of her sat several other important members of the remaining three families. The Kimiyoshi family and the Furude family. First on the list for the Kimiyoshi family was, of course, the mayor of Hinemizawa village, uh, Kichiro Kimijo uh, Kimiyoshi. And lined up beside him were several more of his direct relatives. Opposite to them sat the other of the three families, the Furude family. Little Rika! The Furude family was only comprised of the family of a Shinto priest, so the only ones sitting there were said priest, his wife, and their daughter Rika. Rika was doted on by many of the older folks in the village, and it seemed that Oreo was no exception. 
While the stress from just attending a family council was said to be enough to shorten her lifespan by three days, it seemed like Rico was the only one exempt from that. No matter how charged the atmosphere was around her, she paid it no mind, instead humming along as she doodled in a sketchbook. In fact, the night before, lying on her stomach while humming and doodling, she nonchalantly tucked her legs into Oreo's futon like it was a, a kotatsu. All this was the three families, and all around the room, lined row upon row, were relatives of the Sonazaki family. The only ones who were afforded cushions to sit on were direct relatives. The others were left to sit in the Seiza position directly on the tatami mats. With Empress Sonazaki enshrined at their center, they were almost like a giant snake coiled around the room. It was decided that everybody would sit in order of their rank. The number of people from the Sonazaki family was overwhelming. The fact the Sonazaki family held so many seats in a meeting where everything pertaining to the village was decided made determining where the balance of power was held in the three families as clear as day. The number of members in attendance from each of the families directly reflected how much influence they had in ruling Hinimizawa. Sato-san, after remaining silent for a while, quietly began to speak. Breaking the long moment of silence was the head of the Kimiyoshi family, Kichiro Kimiyoshi. The Onigafuchi Defense Alliance wasn't a business. They were nothing more than a private organization pushing for the cancellation of the Hinimizawa Dam project, with no reliable source of income. Fundraising had always been a problem. When they first started operating, they had managed to collect a sizable amount of funds through donations. But as the conflict dragged on, that amount was steadily declining. The expressions of the people related to the Sonazaki family were sullen. As the one who suggested that they should borrow the power was the family head, Oreo Sonazaki. The battle wasn't just about force of arms. In the civilized age, there were civilized methods of fighting. Oreo suggested that, creating a strategy in incorporating the mass media. Oreo's foresight was spot on, and the effects of that plan, while at first unclear, slowly began to manifest. The physical confrontation at the construction site was meant to delay progress on the dam by even one day. Then the propaganda war using the media was aimed at attacking the dam project itself. At first, there were those who had doubts of the strategy, but there was nobody now who called those results into question. But in order to maintain those media ties, a colossal amount of money was required. As long as the amount of funds they had were abundant, things would turn out fine. It couldn't be argued that it was a massive expense, but the results spoke for themselves. But with the conflict continuing to drag on, the circumstances had changed. The head of the Sonazaki family, no, the one who sat at the pinnacle of Hinimzawa's three families, Oreo, had suggested the idea herself, so it was already untouchable, and continued to be allowed to drain from the budget. Nobody acknowledged that it should so be allowed, but nobody could say anything. That was the price of dealing with the mass media. The only person who could object to a plan proposed by the head of the Sonazaki household herself was probably Mayor Kimiyoshi. Oreo, with a hard-to-define expression on her face, as if she severed herself from the fetters of mortal uh, emotion, simply listened quietly to Kimiyoshi's words. But really, it was hard to tell if she was quietly listening or didn't even have the intention of listening at all. The mayor looked to the priest and his wife and the Furuday family for affirmation. The priest gave a vague expression, avoiding a prompt response. But his wife gave her answer without a second thought. I wonder if this is why Rika's parents 
Uh, well, they did say that, I think, in previous chapters, that they were also... I'm not going to say they were against the, uh, you know, stopping the Hinamizawa Dam projects, but obviously they have a little bit of hesitation about how to do it. The bulletin was, as its name implied, a bulletin published by the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance. It outlined the Alliance's activities, ideals, and resolve, but you couldn't deny the contents were really, uh, piecemeal. That bulletin's main goal wasn't to inform people, but rather was something to sell to businesses and people living in the village or connected to it, and using those sales to collect funds. In other words, it had become something of a tax. Of course, it didn't have to be said that this is one of the main sources of income for the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance. Originally, purchase was supposed to be voluntary, but in Hinimizawa, it had silently become the opposite. In the neighboring towns as well, it seemed that many businesses were buying coffees just to avoid butting heads with the Alliance. The priest whispered to his wife not to say anything unnecessary, but was struck down decidedly with a cold glare. Cowering from that glare, the priest shut his mouth. The priest's wife always held the power in their relationship. That was because she was the one who carried the Furuday bloodline. And we don't really know much about Rika's family at all. Like, we just know that they died under mysterious circumstances, and that's kind of about it. The priest merely married into the family. He was nothing more than somebody who adopted the name just to join the three families. And that I didn't know either. I guess I would assume that the father, you know, usually the father, that's who carries the last name, but in this case it's the opposite. He should have been able to find a spot fairly high up in the hierarchy of things, but the lack of authority in his voice meant that he still had not gained any favor. Casting a backwards glance at her rather disparate parents, Rika continued to doodle whimsically without paying them any mind. Signaled by a look from Oreo, Mion brought her ear closer to her grandmother. There, something was said to her in a quiet voice. After responding with a couple of questions, with a nod from Oreo, Mion looked around the room and conveyed her grandmother's words. Kimiyoshi made a face like he had just bit into something unpleasant, but that expression quickly disappeared like it had never happened at all. だ、だけど、ミオンちゃん。君だって内部から崩れるのは誰ですか。どれって別にそういう意味じゃ。damn、she's <laughs> Mion repeated her question once more, looking around the crowded room. Everybody refrained making eye contact to avoid being pierced by her gaze. The words she had spoken were unarguably said in proxy for Oreo. That's why when Mion spoke them, they carried the same weight. But the look in her eyes was different. Like Oreos, they had a hawkish gaze, strong enough that anybody looking upon them would freeze in their tracks and yield. But that gaze was without question one that belonged to Mion herself. As Mion would eventually inherit everything from Oreo, the day, uh, the day when she would stand up as young and capable leader in her own right would come. Nobody wanted to believe otherwise for even a minute. That's why nobody even thought of Mion as just some sort of little kid. Kimiyoshi-san, <laughs> Kimiyoshi, while grumbling a, grumbling a little bit, made a gesture as if to say he had no objection. Mion had rendered her judgment. Everybody bowed their heads, silently listening to her words. Damn, and she's what, like, ten years old, maybe? The formal decree was read aloud, indicating her judgment. 
There would be no retrial, but there was a certain authority behind those words that even a courthouse couldn't compare to. If she was a judge, she would have banged her gavel, sign signaling that the matter was settled. Mion pulled out a large bell from inside her clothes and rang it. Oh, there's that bell. I mean, it might not be the exact same bell. I know you guys told me in the last episode that they do reuse uh, backgrounds and sound effects. It's not necessarily the same thing, but I'm just hearing that bell from the last chapter with Keichi and the extra footsteps, and it just gives me a little bit of pause when I hear it. Everybody present could only uh, prostrate themselves before the harsh sound of the bell. It was exactly as Oishi had said. The old system of the three families had vanished, and now the Sonozaki family was running things by themselves. On top of that, their rule was borderline despotic. Eventually, after the ringing of the bell ceased, there was a deafening silence. Within all of that, a lone man shuffled closer to Mion and whispered something in her ear. Mion asked several questions quietly in response. When she was satisfied, she motioned for the man to leave. The man who talked to Mion was a member of the gang that her father was the leader of. That organization had the entire area of Shishibone City under its control, so it was quite well known even here. Of course, this was talking about the criminal underworld, so it's not like just anybody would know. But just showing a patch with the gang symbol on it was enough to resolve any disputes in the neighborhood. Mion's biological father to Oreo was her daughter's husband. The power of that man's gang was the driving force that controlled the dark underbelly of the, Gon of the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance. And so that man, from his position as the next in line to control the three families, continued to coerce everybody around him with his unconventional presence. Mion exchanged a look with her father. Was it okay for her to tell what she had just heard directly to Oreo? It looked like she was asking him that question. Her father gently, but firmly, nodded his response. Mion also nodded, then sidled up to Oreo and informed her of something. Eventually, Mion finished conveying her message, separated herself from Oreo, and fixed her posture, waiting for Oreo to signal her response. It wasn't often that Oreo showed any emotion. That's why, when she stirred to laugh quietly, a vague sense of uneasiness crept over everybody in the room. Sora. <laughs> Oreo was laughing so happily that Kimiyoshi had to hesitantly ask. Kimiyoshi, unable to comprehend the meaning of her words, looked confused. Oreo, with a wide grin on her face, turned toward everybody and addressed them in a clarion voice. ダムの親玉の大臣がの孫さらわれちまって、うおさをしとるっちゅう話だ。これで弱い子だの。バカな。<笑><笑> All right, there's the uh, there's the confirmation. I guess I didn't even make that connection. I was like, of course, we know that they were most likely behind the kidnapping, but Akasaka wouldn't have assumed that. Information on the kidnapping of Minister Inugai's grandson shouldn't have been leaked from anywhere. How did they know? Even we didn't know much about the kidnapping incident. Exactly how did an antique household so far away from Tokyo come to know of it? It was a tranquil place, but I couldn't help but have an uneasy feeling about Hinimazawa Village. At some point, I had mentally filed this place away as unrelated to the incident at hand. That mental paperwork had just blown away in the wind. Sato-san, unable to come up with an answer, fell into silence.
Oh, I guess they weren't in the loop about it. Yes, uh, the Sonazakis did it. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me that they did it without anyone's, con you know, consultation about it. That major of an incident was nowhere to be seen in the newspapers or on TV. But in Hinimizawa, there was nothing strange about Oreo knowing something that the rest of the world didn't. <laughs> the last question wasn't addressed to anybody in particular. It was as if she was looking for consensus. Danga. Oh, okay, right. So, okay, so Mion, that's right, Mion asked her dad's permission to, uh, to let Oreo know, so I guess she didn't really have any idea of what they were going to do. Mion's father must have decided to do that on his own, and the uh, the mob decided to do that. I'm guessing, I don't know, did Oreo request that? Or did the Sonazaki's, you know, the uh, the mob side, did they go kind of behind her back and do that, and then just let her know, like, hey, we've done this, so just letting you know that. I... she must have known. I doubt that they would just do that without consulting her.鬼が淵獅子同盟が誘拐事件に関与しているという必ずしもそうとは言えねえなどうして当主である汚霊がこれほどまではっきりと誘拐した孫の処遇について指示を出しているのに兄さんこれはねその座機家のいつものことなんだ
忠告ありがとうございます気をつけることにします標準語が流暢だよな兄さんは東京とかの人えそれが何か Investigators were always close to danger. It was best not to divulge any information on myself. Nisa no shigoto da kedo sa. Yotto shite. Kishicho no kouanbu no hito ってことある I couldn't remain silent here. It would be the same thing as admitting it. Eh? まさか。ここから旦那からもらった金の範囲には入らないんだが、兄さんとは今日。タクを囲んだ仲間だからなサービスってことで話してやるよお寮から誘拐の話が出た後もう一つ話題が出た、oh, no. Do they know? They know the, uh, Do they know it's him? That isn't supposed to be there? Another topic that Oreo brought up? And right before he told me this Sato-san asked if I was from the Metropolitan Public Safety Division? In other words What those two things meant caused a chill to run up my spine. They know, they know. Sunday, ne? Oh, the old person is that the guy that was,、uh, that was driving him around? I knew it! I freaking knew he was probably. He knew, he knew. Gaijin no mago, Saratano, a shirabido, Tamini. Takawa gara, Halubaru, Koan no Sosakan, Hokin, Solite, Kuru, Chu, Hanashida. Okay, I shouldn't say I know, but it says old person, and we know the person that took. Uh, Akasaka on that tour was an older guy as well. so... And he obviously is with the.、Um, he's with the Onaga Fuchi Defense Alliance, or at least he, he knows about them. So I'm just wondering if that guy was rooting him out. And, and that's why they insisted on him coming back to the shrine. Maybe they can kind of like kidnap him and get information from him. Koan no Sosaka! 大臣の孫の誘拐な部活にゃ大ごとにでギャンってことで警視庁の公安部が独自で調べとるちゅう話だはっ大行なこったのうんどうした Rika who had been drawing the entire time and was completely uninterested in the conversation up until now looked at Oreo with an interested face as soon as the topic of public safety came up 警視庁が来たのですかうんうん、警視庁も知ってなさるんかい。Okay, I guess that's not the same old person. いらいの。誰が来たのですか。公安のどんなやつが来よったんか。誰ぞわかるやつはおらんかいな。Rika, come on, we had a good time. Don't rat us out. Mion's father raised his hand slightly. 新米の若造が一人と聞き及んだ。新米ほかほかなのですかうん<笑>ええはい新米とかミオンズファーザーは笑うリーリーに言うリーカーの質問ほかほかのふかふかええおかあ、ちょっと言われてるほかほかのふかふかリーカーは笑うリーカーの質問ほ Why did Rika suddenly act interested only when it came to this topic? That was a question that apparently nobody had the answer to. Rika chama wa sono otoko no koto naika shitte iru no kai na. Oh, oh, what's that face mean? Shin nai no desu yo. Rika, thank you. Thank you. After her rather flat reply, Rika buried herself underneath Oreo's futon again. But when she buried herself there, Rika no longer started drawing again. Instead, she was making an expression like she was deep in contemplation. Mion's father posed the question. He had the type of uncouth expression on his face indicating that, given the order, he could snuff out the problem at any time. Mion's father asked in response. Oreo smiled thinly as she responded. Oreo 
なんて話があったそうだまさかあんたその警視庁の新米じゃないよなまさか<笑> Oh boy Come on Akasaka Where's that,、uh, where's that confidence You know A bluffing that you were doing during What's that game called? I've already forgotten it The sensation of cold, bristling fear began to crawl its way up my back. This family council took place last night. In other words, yesterday. Then today, when I was dressed up as a tourist headed towards Hinemizawa, my cover was already blown? And I remembered the first person I met when I got to the bus stop. I couldn't breathe. Okay, so. Oh man, I knew it! I knew it! It's like I said, it's like they, they put Rika out there. Well. Once again, I'm jumping to conclusions. Maybe she wasn't out there on purpose to kind of suss out the potential mole or the,、uh, you know, person sneaking in. So this happened. Okay. So this happened. This happened before. So Rika wasn't covering for me. She was just genuinely interested in it, apparently. The person at the family council who expressed interest in the man being dispatched from the Metropolitan Police, Rika Furude. And then the person who was waiting for me the whole time in the bus shelter, Rika Furude. It was an unthinkable image. No, it was a delusion. She totally was there to have him drop his,、uh, what's the word?、Uh, his guard a little bit. When we met at that bus shelter, did Rika Chan already know my true identity? Did she know I was Akasaka, dispatched from the Metropolitan Police Department, and come to meet me? Then, including Mary, Mayor Kimiyoshi, every villager that I met, everybody knew but just pretended not to? Because Oreo had given instructions not to interfere? Thinking about it logically, it didn't seem possible. Nothing is logical in this damn village. I met quite a number of people. There's people that are good at acting, then there's people who are bad at hiding things. If there were that many people, there should have been somebody among them who knew I was from public safety and couldn't hide their hostility. Well, that was technically Rika when she snapped on you and told you, go back to Tokyo. However, I didn't feel any presence like that. But then, even still, why did Oreo tell, me to, tell them to leave me alone? Was it because if they were careless about it, it would only raise more suspicion? Or was it because they believed a rookie like me wouldn't be able to find anything? Akasaka is a coward. I recall that strange voice which could only make me believe Rika chan had been possessed. That unknown entity, no matter how you looked at it, knew my true identity from the get go. And then, how did it warn me again? That's right. It warned me to hurry up and go back to Tokyo. Instead of the realistic worry that the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance had discovered my identity, the absurd worry brought on by the unknown girl stuck with me more. What exactly was that girl? What was the thing I would eventually regret? That mysterious girl, Rika Furde. Let's stop this. Everything I was thinking of right now is merely conjecture. Tomorrow, first thing in the morning, I'll report everything I heard right now to HQ and await further orders. There was no mistaking that the possibility the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance was related to this case was there, and that the fact that my cover was blown meant I was in a precarious position. But as everybody at HQ is already extremely busy, they might not be able to spare the support. Oh, I'm going to go to the house. 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 A rural road where even a street light was rare. I couldn't see anything. I wasn't aware of anything but the asphalt that was lit up by the headlights. Outside of that light, was it simply darkness? Or was there something lurking there, waiting to strike? I had to think I drew the short straw here. I wanted to go back to Tokyo. For some reason, the voice of the girl wa、uh, warning me to go back to Tokyo still lingered in my head. Okay, so that is creepy the idea that everybody knew from the get go who he is, and they were all just playing nice, and they invited him back to the shrine the next day. Right, it's first, the investigation runs aground. Hmm, Kino Ginza no Ryote de Oaistene. So you Hanashinga detam dio. 
物質の越見でしょう。連中、公安に干渉しすぎですよ。あまり迎合すると悪い洗礼を残しますね。犬飼い大臣は公安の動きに不快感をあらわにしているらしい。多分、月曜の町議で、時間からその旨の話が出るんじゃないかと思う。参ったな時間へは、局長級に話しつけてもらうしかないですよ。給料を多くもらってる人の当然の仕事ってことで。まあそうなると、局長からは絶対に大臣脅迫の物証を求められるよな。あの人、たまにどっちの味方かわかんなくなりますね。うちらの味方しなくてどうすんのってな。まあ多分、大臣を経由しての圧力だと思ってるけどね。俺が時間室で油汗かいて時間稼ぐ間に調査進めてもらうしかないよな。全身の汗絞られて、絞りカスになっちゃうかもしれないけどな。で、どうなの調査の進行は。期待してた濃厚なラインがことごとく外れて、正直途方に暮れてます。最近の大臣発言をまとめると、ひなみざわダムの計画の話が目立つっていう報告を聞いたけど、それはどうなの<笑>目立つっていうか、本当に微細な程度の違和感ですね。たまたま県議連でのスピーチだったから、時事ネタを話しただけかもしれないし。確か、地元団体が過激に抵抗してるってやつだっけ鬼が淵死守同盟。確か、赤坂くんに調べてもらってたよね。僕は連中には、今回の事件は起こせないと踏んでいます。ですが、疑わしいところのほとんどが真っ白な以上、疑いの枠から外すわけにはいかないかも。です。赤坂くんからは、その可能性は否定できないとの軽い報告は受けています。なら、調べてみる価値はあるんじゃないのしらみつぶしなんだから、残る疑わしい団体がそこ一つなら、やるしかないでしょう。ま、調べる団体はそこだけじゃないんですがね。<笑>鬼ヶ淵と同じ程度のレベルで疑わしい団体になると、もう相当の数になりますよ。人でも時間も、残業代も、全然足りません。赤坂くんからさ、もうちょっと詳しく聞いてみてよ。俺はちょっと要注意に感じるけどな、その死守同盟。彼、村人とうまく接触できたって連絡してきました。現地の警察とも連携できてるみたいですね。赤坂くんとの連絡密にしてください。それで彼からの情報が引っかかるようであれば、増援を送ることもありということで。Well, こっちに回しますかああ、いい。そっち行きます。もしもし Okay, so not really too much new information there. What's in the box? Do you believe that there are choices in life? Oh, this is that the narrator who keeps these very metaphorical questions. There are many people who lament the following. There only existed points in life where there were clear choices to make. We would be able to scrutinize those carefully and make decisions that would lead us to a better future. Every time I hear people lament as such, I cast it off as a rather trivial worry. Even if you were given a clear choice, it wouldn't be meaningful at all, and there wouldn't be any such path to a better future. Is this hard to understand? Then let's pretend in front of you there are two strange boxes. In other words, you have two clear choices. Do you open the red box or the blue box? A lot of things would be uncertain even with that choice, wouldn't they? If you don't have the option of opening neither, then your choice boils down to the natural impulse of opening the box that holds a better result for you. Then, after examining the shape and features of each, and pondering a great many things, you have to pick either the red or the blue. If this was you, which box would you open? Red or blue? If you were to go by their traditional meanings, then red would be a dangerous, threatening color. 
However, that doesn't automatically mean it would be calm and relaxing inside the blue box, either. In fact, it might even be that the colors are a trap, make you wary of the red box, and have you open the blue. A trap? Could it be the contents of the box aren't a reward, but rather a penalty? See? Now you're at a loss. You're so conflicted over the choice between red and blue that you've started wishing there was an option to open neither and just leave. But there isn't. You have to open either the red box or the blue box. Oh, I forgot to say this, but if you choose one box, the other will disappear. So you'll never know the contents of the box you didn't open. I'll just put that rule at the end there for you. Now, why don't you choose? The red box or the blue box? It's alright, you won't lose anything by picking either one. Come on now. Oh, 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 oh my gosh! There's actually a choice in this game! This is what I've been wanting! I was just about to say, I would open blue box just because I like the color blue. Have you thought about it? In the end, you chose this color, didn't you? As soon as you chose, the other box disappeared. So you can give up on the contents of that one, okay? That's the rule. Now open up the box you chose. Inside the box, there was... A stick of chewing gum. I know you're a little disappointed. Well, that's only natural. No matter how you look at it, it looks like you drew the dud. The correct box might have had a bar of chocolate in it, for all you know. No, in fact, something incredible, like a pair of tickets to Hawaii might have been in there. But, even if you want to verify that, the other box has already disappeared. There's no way you can check now. But if you think about it from an optimistic point of view, just maybe the other box was empty, and this box was the winner. And being satisfied, or perhaps not with such a cheap prize, you pop it into your mouth and start chewing it happily. So, what do you think in the end? If you were given a second chance, would you try to open the other box? But unfortunately, the chance to choose between the red box or the blue box has come and gone, never to be seen again. I'm curious, for those of you who opened the red box, was it a stick of gum no matter which box you chose, or was it actually something different? The chance to change your selection will never come. Don't your parents often say, every choice you make in life only happens once, so choose carefully? Hee hee hee. See? Choices aren't that great after all. Aren't you a little disillusioned now? Ah ha ha ha. I mean, technically I could just reload a previous save and open the red box and see if it's any different, but I know that's not real life. Okay, the glint in the demon's eye. え、はい。それで、お通夜が明日の午後6時からになりまして、国別式が明後日のお昼、12会場は沖宮セレモニーホールになります。すっか。池澤女役のお孫さんの葬式じゃ。何にも挨拶なしってわけにもいかんね。見
Aryo closed her eyes and shook her head lightly, lamenting the loss of such a young life. <laughs> Having gotten the reaction she expected, Mion cackled. The two guests, unsure if they were supposed to laugh along, instead forced awkward smiles. After bowing their heads repeatedly, the guests left by the front door. Mion saw them off, waving her little hand goodbye. <laughs> well, it was true that Oryo Sonozaki was a central person for both her relatives and the residents of Hinimizawa Village as a whole. As a voting block, they numbered in the several thousands. It wasn't hard to imagine the mayor would try to pander to her. Unlike Mion, however, Oryo was looking up longingly at the sky from the uh, veranda. <laughs> Saying that, she let out a deep sigh. Mio was let down, as normally her grandmother would have scolded her for her attitude. Mio, I was just about to say, I was like, I guess she has a soft spot for children when she says, you know, don't, don't let any harm come to him. Hmm. Oreo let out another deep sigh. So Oh boy, you're scary me on. The playful expression drained from Mion's face, leaving behind a stern one. And then, as if to ascertain Oreo's will, looked her in the eyes. Oreo, expressing her intention with only those eyes, looked back into Mion's. <laughs> Mion gave a small nod and turned around. Shimiko-san, from far away, a voice responded in the affirmative. Mion, after confirming she'd been heard, picked up the phone and began dialing. Alright, so that is going to do it for this episode of Higurashi. I hope you guys enjoyed the fact that the, uh, you know, the village knows about one of the police force being in their village and the f and the possibility that they were all just playing nice and they knew right from the start and Akasaka had no idea and the fact that he said he was going to visit them tomorrow there he's going right into the lion's den is a little concerning um i'm i'm curious to see how that's going to go so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and please stay tuned for the next one until next time bye guys <laughs>